The tangent line problem. One of the major reasons calculus grew was from a problem faced by mathematicians. What does it mean to be a line tangent to a curve? Well, with circles, it's easy. A tangent line at any point P on the circle is perpendicular to the radius, as shown. But what about other curves like these? Here's our tangent in this one. Here's our tangent in this one. And here's our tangent in this problem. What does it mean to be tangent to these curves? What the question ended up really asking is what would the slope of the line at any point on the curve be in order to make it tangent? To investigate this problem further, mathematicians began by approximating the slope of a curved function through two points. Any slope can be approximated using a secant line through two points on the curve, as is shown in the graph. The slope of a secant line represents the average rate of change of a continuous function on the given interval from x sub 0 to x sub 1. Recall the slope formula given the points x sub 0, y sub 0, and x sub 1, y sub 1. Well, the slope or m value is equal to y sub 1 minus y sub 0 divided by x sub 1 minus x sub 0. We can adjust the slope formula for a secant line by using delta x to represent the difference between x values and f of x to represent the y values. That makes the formula become f of x plus delta x minus f of x all divided by x plus delta x minus x, which then simplifies, if you notice, the x values or x's in the denominator cancel out. So it simplifies to f of x plus delta x minus f of x all divided by delta x. And this formula is known as the difference quotient. Let's try an example. Below is a possible graph of traveling 100 miles in two hours. What is the average rate of change for the trip? And is this constant for the entire trip? Let's find out. Let's start with that first question. What is the average rate of change for this trip? Well, we can see that the change in x, or delta x, is 2. So that's going to be the number in our denominator. And then in the numerator, at 2, we are at 100, minus where we're at, at 0, which is 20. And if we do the subtraction, we get 80 divided by 2, which is 40. So the average rate of change is 40 miles per hour. Is this value constant, or rate constant, for the entire trip? Well, the answer here is no. If you use the values for the first hour, the average rate of change is 20 miles per hour, which is not equal to the previous answer that we found. What is the average rate of change of the function f of x is equal to x squared minus 1 on the interval from x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 2? Let's figure that out. We begin by setting up the rate of change formula. So we would have f of 2 minus f of negative 1 all divided by 2 minus negative 1. Next we evaluate and simplify. If we substitute 2 in for x in our function we get 4 minus 1 which is 3. If we substitute negative 1 in there we'll get negative, two, negative 1 squared which is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0. So you get 3 divided by 2 minus negative 1 is 3, and then when we divide, we get 1. 